Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and today we're going to talk about in-depth fishing defenses. And I'm, of course, wearing my fishing garb, which is an overdone trope, but I'm going to try to focus on some techniques to stop fishing in organizations that I think often get overlooked. Now, of course, I'm also talking about this from being a former penetration tester where I would do fishing to you know, test the security of the companies and targets we're trying to break into, uh, but also as an investor for Gula Tech Adventures, we have a number of great fishing and email security type companies in our portfolio. And if you want to learn more, check it out at gula.tech. So the, the first thing that's really obvious, uh, email is the number one thing that people target. You have to lock this down. You have to secure it. If you think what you're getting directly from your email provider is good enough, it's probably not. It's the baseline. And you know you really need to be adding something into your corporate email to protect that from phishing. And this, this is pretty basic and old news. But Almost everybody forgets to protect the user's personal email. I work at uh, work with a lot of different organizations, and I always ask them, like, how do you do you enable users to check their personal Gmail, you know, the personal Hotmail and whatnot? And if you do, how are you protecting that? And a lot of times, I get the hand wave, and well, we have an EDR on the endpoint, but that's that's a last line of defense. And why why not do some filtering, some inspections, some some filtering there? And I'm going to give you some other techniques to uh, to do that. Now, a lot of organizations are investing in communications outside of email. It's no secret that Slack and Teams and other forms of uh, corporate communications like that are really, really popular. Now, this is good because maybe if your email is used for external communications and your Slack and your Teams is used for internal communications, you already have a separation of, um, of uh, some attacks there. But increasingly, I'm seeing organizations have multiple chats for multiple organizations all over the place. And this simply just becomes another attack vector. Uh, I'm on many Discord servers, many different Slack channels. They're all outside of Google Tech Adventures. And I see this a lot with organizations. So you have to have other lines of defense for, you know, for stopping these attacks. And I've seen a lot of organizations not police or monitor, maybe the better term, uh, to even prevent you know, attacks that are going on internally here. In other words, I can email you a URL and it might be really, really hostile and you might have eight or nine things that will we'll, we'll block that. If I somehow get on your Slack channel and share a hostile URL with you, it might go right to you and you might actually click on it because it's trusted, let alone pushing a document out there. And there's been a number of hacking cases uh, out there where corporations have been compromised because of their internal communications being victim to a third party. Now, a great way to prevent these kind of attacks is with browser plugins. We all know about EDRs. We all know about you know packet filtering, and we'll talk about that in a second. But there, this is a new day and age right now in 2023 where you can put a browser plugin inside your Chrome, inside your Firefox, your Edge, whatever you have, and you can get some prevention, uh, some basic uh, you know DNS filtering, URL filtering, logging, as well as even file inspection of what's being uh, downloaded. And this is really cool because, you know, the EDR is kind of the ultimate thing you want to be putting on endpoints that you control. But maybe you don't control these. Maybe these are pers people that are working for you that are contracted and you don't have the right to patch their computer and monitor their, their computer. You might have the right to, you know, have them use a certain type of browser to access your, uh, your systems. Now, another thing that can help along those same lines is having a, a secure DNS. And people think there's all sorts of different kind of attacks that can that can occur that you can get stopped with a certain DNS. But DNS is usually the main thing that malware we use to communicate, whether it's a phishing malware, malicious malware, or even just a website that's you know trying to get you to cough up a uh, you know Amex card, Amazon cards, that you know gift cards, that sort of thing. So modern DNS security services can really stop a wide variety of attacks, including stuff that gets through your your email. I like to tell people that, you know, if you have an email filtering tool, a certain vendor, you might, you might love it, but think of that vendor as a filter and an attacker is going to come up with a way to, uh, to, you know, sneak an email through there. Well, having a separate threat stack, such as something, uh, part of your DNS lookup service that has a different way of identifying bad things, it gives you more defense in depth. You certainly don't want to have the same set of checks on your inbound email, your DNS and that, because if I beat one, I got to beat them. You, you really want to be in a situation, quoting, quoting uh, Chris Inglis here, where you, you have to beat all of them to be one of you, so, um, or to, to get one of you. So that's the way you got to think about that. Now, the last thing I want to kind of talk about from a technology point of view is just monitoring the network. And again, in 2023, most of our focus on organizations and defending them is the endpoint. 
But as we move into more break and inspect, as we move into more zero trust, as we move into more you know, virtual networks and whatnot, you need to have this back into your stack. So I, I really feel like 2020, 2023, we're heading back into the like the late late 90s, early 2000s, where we were doing network monitoring, packet forensics, doing some filtering, doing all sorts of different architectures where we have an advantage in understanding how our networks were being used. If you look at uh, modern technology that's out there that talks about which of your computers communicates with, with other computers, um, you know how you can monitor network traffic and flow to understand your business logic and, 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 and things like that. You can actually use a lot of this stuff to look for odd patterns and odd anomalies. If you don't have visibility into that, if somebody beats one of your endpoint defense systems, then uh, they're going to have free reign to your, uh, your network. And the last point I want to talk about is, of course, if you're going to teach people how to recognize a fish, you have awareness training. Of course, awareness training is, beats to de- is beat to death very often. My recommendation here is that you need to use real sophisticated simulations. You can't just train people and show them a slide. You've got to, have, you've got to create a teaching moment, which is realistic yet non-disruptive that's going to allow people to recognize when they are being fooled or when they are being perhaps you know tricked into downloading malicious software that could compromise their network all right good luck with your phishing defenses in depth i'm ron gula if you want to see more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel or visit us at gula.tech have a great day